Hey there, welcome to I Can, I Am, I Will, the podcast designed to motivate and encourage you so you can build your confidence and get empowered. Today we're going to talk about a cognitive distortion called all or nothing thinking. It is also referred to as extreme thinking, black and white thinking, and splitting. It's something that is extremely prevalent in our culture. It is something that you do. I don't even know who you are, but you do it (laughs) because you've been encouraged to do it. It's negatively impactful, not only to your mental and emotional well-being, it's also going to hurt your confidence and your empowerment. So we're going to talk about it today. For those of you who are new, my name is Lindsay. With this podcast, we talk about concepts and topics that are going to help you build your confidence, get empowered, do the things that you want to do, live your dreams. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You can contact me, find articles, transcripts of episodes, and support the podcast at KenMWill.com. Thank you for your support. Mm-mm. And I would love to hear from you. How great am I doing? Let me know. No hate mail, please. <laughs> Gets me sad. Today we're going to talk about all or nothing thinking, what it is, why we need to know what it is. I'm going to give you some examples, some common words that can help you identify all or nothing thinking. And then we're going to talk real quickly about how to combat all or nothing thinking. All or nothing thinking is a cognitive distortion. I tell people to think of cognitive as a fancy way of saying thought. It's a thought distortion. Think of it like an unhelpful thought pattern. So our thoughts come in. And sometimes we don't question them, but we need to if we want to be happy because sometimes there can be negative thoughts that are created from our environment and we internalize them and take in that suggestion. These unhelpful thoughts are called cognitive distortions. Aaron T. Beck created 15 of them. He noticed that they are prevalent with people who have depression and anxiety. He's a a therapist and he noticed a lot of his clients had the same negative thought pattern, so he labeled them. We talked about this in episode 60 and then we went into some examples in episode 65 to 67. We talked about generalization, should statements, and fortune telling. If you noticed... I didn't say this is something you should focus on. I said it's something that you need to focus on. That's a much, much different energy there because it is something that you need to focus on. I would not steer you wrong. All or nothing thinking is a negative thought pattern in which we split the world into either ors. An example would be Either you're a total success or a total failure. I came up with the idea of doing this episode when I talked about my progress on my workouts in episode 75 and how I was losing weight and then I would have like a bad week and then I would like feel like I completely failed. And that's what all or nothing thinking is. It's that one or the other. If you have a setback, you think that it's a complete loss. So they call it black and white thinking or extreme thinking. It's when life is rigid and you forget about everything that is in between because life is complex. And sometimes, yes, you will have an either or option. Do you want the salad or the soup? (laughs) Do you want the sneakers in black or white? They only made two options. However, in the majority of life, there are more than two options. 
this is why organizations want diverse teams because when you have diverse teams, you typically get diverse mind frames and then you get all different options and then you pick the best one. Companies do this. Do this for yourself. Yourself Inc. We need to know what it is because it can make life rigid. It can lead you down a dark path. You can think that something's never going to get better. You can think that someone or people never understand you. You can think that you always make the wrong decision. All or nothing thinking leads to the negative. And it blinds your perception of reality. It puts a lens on and it blinds you to the reality of life. So you're seeing life in a skewed view. And say that you mess up and you make a mistake. You can think, I always do the wrong thing. But there could be times when you do everything so right. And you might think, no one likes me. So you're feeling like depressed or you're having a bad day or someone rejected you. You could think no one likes me, but there are people out there who love you. And you might be sitting there thinking no one likes me. And then you're not focused on the people that love you. When those people that love you can help you and support you. A visualization for all or nothing thinking can be going back to episode 75 when I was talking about working out a lot of diet, dieting, we label things as good or bad. So we label food as good or bad. Food is not either good or bad. Food is on a a nutritional scale with one end of the scale being not nutritional at all and one end of the scale being highly nutritional. Not nutritional at all would be soda And then highly nutritional would be superfoods like kale and blueberries. And then we have everything in between. It's on this scale. It's not bad or good. We have a nutritional scale. But you'll see a lot of people that are having trouble with losing weight and with dieting and with eating and binge eating because they're labeling food as bad or good. And then they in turn label themselves as bad or good for eating that food. Like, oh, I was so bad I had this, that, and the other thing. I was so bad I had a cheese cheesecake for dinner. It doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you good. It means that you ate a cheesecake for dinner. And I don't know, personally, I think that's live your dreams. I'm more of like a chocolate cake person. But hey, cheesecake's like kind of heavy, whatever. <laughs> this can hurt your progress. Because if you are working towards something, you have typically you go up and then you might have a setback because you're learning and you make mistakes because you're a fallible human being. And then you'll probably have another jump up and then you might have another setback. You might not. And then it's just like it's an ebb and flow and you're eventually climbing up. But in this culture of unrealistic, unobtainable perfectionism, we get this idea that it has to be like a, like a steady climb with no failure. I have an article on canonwill.com of 51 success or failure to success quotes. And there are people on there that are super successful. Michael Jordan, Thomas Edison, a whole bunch of people that say JK Rowling that say that they needed to fail in order to succeed. But if you think in all or nothing thinking, and if you think that failure is the end, the end all be all, then you won't get back up when if only you got back up, you'd be able to climb even higher. That's why I get like super creeped out when people are like, it's all or nothing. Or either you hate me or you love me. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Red flag, red flag, red flag. (laughs) I have to like go hard, play hard. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Your mental health, please, please. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do this to yourself. A way to combat all or nothing thinking is to find the middle ground. We just did that with the dieting, with good or bad food. Find that middle ground. Put it on a scale. 
another way you could do that is to go to the opposite extreme and then find the middle ground. So if you think that you're a horrible person, then you can go to the opposite extreme and be like, I'm the best person in the world. And then you can be like, okay, well, I'm not horrible. And I'm also not the best person in the world. So like, where is that middle ground there? (laughs) I wrote a workbook about how to combat all or nothing thinking. If you're interested, it is on canandwill.com. It is a like a journalistic style, there are journal prompts that will help you work through the all or nothing thinking and it explains what it is and gives examples. With that, we're going to end with our I affirming statements. You can say them with me. You do not have to. You can do whatever makes you feel good. Are you ready? I can. I am. I will. Have a great day.